Welcome everyone. My name is Pastor Dave Carter with New Life in Sterling, Virginia. I'd like to welcome you to today's message. The title is called A Heart of a Champion. Today is Father's Day, so my message will be to all the fathers today, and I pray that you will be blessed this wonderful special day. I'm reminded of a, a story of the young father who just had a brand new newborn baby boy, so excited. And his wife said, I need to leave and run a few errands. Will you watch your son? Of course, the father wanted to do that. He was excited to watch the son. And so the son uh, began to cry. It wasn't very long after the mother left, it cried and began to cry. And so he'd been trying to figure out what was wrong. He tried to get hold the baby, walk on the floor, and he, everything he could think of, the baby continued to cry. Nothing would stop the baby from crying. Finally, in desperation, uh, he put the baby in the car and ran to see his doctor. And the doctor said, sure, bring the baby in, begin to check the baby over. And finally he says, oh, here's the problem. The diaper needs to be changed. And, and the man, uh, the young father said to the doctor, well, doctor, I, 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 I check, I, I checked the uh, bag of diapers and it said it was good up to 10 pounds. Isn't that like us men thinking that, that we could just wait and wait and eventually we would figure it out, but sometimes we don't. Thank God that we have some wonderful mothers as well and we are so blessed. I'd like to go to the scriptures today in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading at verse 6, 1 Samuel 16, verse 6. And it came to pass, when they were come, they looked at Ebed and said, Surely the Lord is anointing us before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, for not on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, for the Lord seeth, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this one. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are all, are all these your children here? Are they all here? And he said, Well, there remaineth yet a youngest one. Behold, he keeps the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. He was ruddy and of a beautiful countenance and handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Here we have in this wonderful story the choosing of a new king. Saul had disobeyed and rebelled against God. Now God says, now I've chosen a new king. And that would be, David would be the new king. But Jesse had in his mind that possibly when he heard that uh, Samuel was coming to anoint a new king in his home, that it would be his eldest son. Usually the eldest receive all the inheritance and uh, was given all the acclimates. I understand a little bit. I'm not the firstborn, but I'm the second, and I know how my brother was treated at times. Everybody knew his name, and they didn't know who I was. And so uh, I understand. But, but Jesse thought it has to be one of these sons that I have here. One of the things I always notice about this passage of Scripture, I wonder why none of the brothers said, Hey, hey, Dad, where's, where's David? Why, why isn't David here? See, they had forgotten David. He was out attending sheep, and, and, and 
each one of the brothers that passed by, Samuel said, nope, God says not this one, not this one, not this one. Seven passed by. And, and then Samuel said, well, Jesse, is this all your sons? No, I have one more. He's a tenant sheep. He, he's the youngest. You, it can't be him. Oh, yes, yes, it could be. Bring him in. <laughs> and it was. See, I believe today we're living in a time there is a serious vacuum of role models of fathers today. Our society overlooks the irresponsibility, immorality, and irreverence of a father. Ezekiel says, and I sought for a father, but I found none. Where are our fathers that are modeling to their children how to live and do right? See, God is looking today for fathers who will rise up and do battle against Satan. Who will take back the territory that Satan has taken from the fathers called fatherhood. Now, Psalms, the psalmist, David, tells us a little bit about God, our Father, and he says of him, he's a father to the fatherless. He's a judge or a defender of the widows. Yes, that's our Father, God. Isn't that a beautiful uh, description of God, the Father, how he loves us? He, he's already modeled to us how we, as fathers, should live and conduct ourselves. Yes, he's a father, of a guardian of the widows. He's the father of the homeless. He's the father of the children who cry out. He's the father who stands up and does the right thing. You remember what Samuel said to Jesse? God told me not to look at their appearance. Don't look at their stature, how tall they are, or their belt. Not to look on that. God doesn't look on those things. He looks on the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And he's looking at our hearts today, fathers. How is our father, how is our fathers living today? Is their heart right before God? Listen to the characteristics of Jesus found in Hebrews 12. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, he endured the cross the scourging and a chain, and sit down at the right hand of the throne of God. The question that I want to ask, what are some of the characteristics that have set fathers apart? What are those? Well, as I look into the, the Bible, I find several wonderful uh, illustrations. And the first one I think of was Noah. The Bible says, by faith, Noah went, was warned about things that were yet to come. And he, he, by having a holy fear, built an ark to save his family. When Noah heard of the things that was coming upon the earth, he went right to work to build an ark. God began to tell him how to build it. And he had built it and him planning out that he would save his family. And see, that's one of the characteristics of a father. He watches and protects and takes care of his family. What father wouldn't want to save his family? And so the characteristics I notice here about Noah that set him apart, he believed God at his word. He made the right choice. He obeyed and did what God asked him to do. Noah had the ability and skill to prepare this ark for God. See, so often fathers today are not prepared to be a father. They're not prepared to take care of children. They're not prepared to teach them. And so often they fail, and they fail so miserably that they feel like they can't be around their children anymore. But no, I would encourage the fathers today, if you have failed, get back up. Keep striving to do the right thing to show your children how to live and conduct themselves. When we see the things that are upon our land and we see uh, young men tearing and destroying other people's property, they have not been taught or trained to do the right thing. My father always told us and said, 
That's somebody else's property. You're not to do damage upon their property. You're not to do this and that to that person's property. And so he trained us and taught us that we are to respect other people's property. If only all of our children understood that today. As I look of a great another father was Father Abraham. By faith, Abraham was called to go to a place that he would later receive as his inheritance and obeyed. And he went. And he didn't even know where God was going to send him, but he was willing to go because he trusted God. He was a father who trusted God. And because he trusted God, that sets Abraham apart as a, fa a father who knew how to follow God. Abraham knew God's ways and accepted it. And that's why he is called the father of fathers. What about Moses? It says, by faith, Moses chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. What characteristics set Moses apart to be the great father he would be? Moses was a man of great courage, willing to suffer for God, it says. Moses was a man of great vision, willing to follow God out in the desert. Moses was a man of great faith, willing to believe God could supply all their needs. Oh, I love great men of faith. I, I enjoy over the years, uh, I, I would be around elderly men as I was a young pastor and saw their great faith and gleaned and learned from them that I would have the same faith as I went along life's path. And I thank God he has given me uh, opportunities to allow my faith to grow. He stretched me. And today, fathers, God wants to stretch you to believe that God can supply all your needs, not part of your needs, not a few of your needs, but all your needs. Put your trust in the Lord. Lean not upon your own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. Please, fathers, don't follow, don't follow the ways of the flesh and get on the wrong road of destruction. The Bible says, broad is the road that people get on. We need to find the narrow path that leads us to righteousness, that leads us a closer walk with the Lord, God Almighty. And today I challenge the fathers to seek the Lord today and know that he will come and bring you the assurance in your heart that he can supply all your needs. John the Baptist was a great man, a great father. He came and he prepared the way of the Savior. And we know that he also pre preached repentance. He was a great father. There, There's so many that we find in Scripture. Let me mention another one to you, Joshua. The Bible talks about Joshua. And it says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. I, I, I like Joshua's stand. He, he, sometimes you've got to take a bold stand. Sometimes you, you can't be uh, uh, wishy-washy about things. You've got to just say, this is what we're going to do, and we're going to stick with it. It's important that we take bold steps. And I find in Joshua, the characteristics that set him apart is that he instructed Israel to serve God. He instructed Israel by telling them to choose, choose this day. He informed in Israel of his own intentions. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't know what your intentions are, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So fathers, I ask you today, what characteristics have set you apart that your children can gleam and, and say, you know, my father was a man of faith. My father took bold steps when no other fathers did. There are times my father would say, you're not going to go to that boy's house. And I'd say, Dad, he's my friend. God's, and my father would say, no, I, I, I don't like that boy. You stay in here today. And I would stay in the house. And, and eventually I find out that the boy had bad intentions. He wanted to go out one time and, and, and destroy something that didn't belong to him. And I had to stay away from people like that. I had to learn those influences were bad for my life. 
See, it's important, fathers, that we have our relationship first should start with God, and then our relationship continues with our family. I'm praying that God will bring many fathers back to the fatherhood that some have abandoned, that they'll come back, and, and if they have left their children, they'll return back to their home and love their sons, love their daughters, as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for us. See, it, it, throughout throughout uh, uh, history, it tells us that fathers that have given their children love and instruction and care turn out so much far better than those who the fathers have abandoned and left. So often, they feel rejected and they feel pain and hurt in their life for years to come. Fathers, if you have left your children, I, I encourage you to pray and return back to their life and be a part of it. Don't let the days begin to mount up that you haven't called them or visited them. Please, Father, I plead with you today to return back and love your children with all the love that Christ has loved us and gave himself for us. It's important that the fathers set the example you know, we read about David, who now was going to become uh, king here, as we read the passage of Scripture. But we're going to find later on, David is going to become a man after God's own heart. That's what I, I pray that all of us fathers will become today, a man after God's own heart. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, Peter tells us the responsibilities of a father. He says here, given all diligence, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and self-control perseverance, and perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness and love. Wow. Wow. Man, if we could follow after these areas, we will be so much more better. For the kingdom of God. For Peter says to us, the father, a true father should possess all of these qualities and keep them close to themselves. And that way we become productive as we go out through this life. It's important that we do the right thing whenever we can and live for the Lord. It's important that we set the, the bar high. So often we want to lower the bar and try to bring God where we are. No, we need to go where he is. We need to ascend new heights. And you're able to do that by having a time of devotions, reading your Bible, and a time of prayer. I urge you to pray for your family. See, we must have the proper relationship with Jesus, and then we'll have a proper relationship with our family. There, there was a story I read, and I wrote it down here to share with you. There was a story published in the Spanish newspaper of a father and a son who had became angry with each other. The son ran away, and the father set out to find him. He searched for months, but to no avail. Finally, in a last desperate effort to find him, the father put an ad in the Madrid newspaper. The ad read, Dear Paco, meet me in front of the newspaper office at noon on Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you. Your father on Saturday will see you then. And you know what happened on Saturday? It says 800 Pacos showed up for forgiveness and a love of a father. As I remember, David had some of his children that rebelled against him. One of his sons, Absalom, rebelled against his father. He, pl he plotted treason against his own father's uh, kingdom. He raised up an army of discontent people and sought to bring about a military coup to take his father's throne from him. But later on, one of David's generals pursued Absalom, and he was killed. The Bible talks about how David mourned and mourned for the loss of a son. Even though his son was rebellious and wicked, he mourned for his sons. Father, I pray that you'll give us men more 
of the tenderness of a heart to mourn and to show our passion and compassion for our children. So what's, what's so important about having a good name? A good name is important. So often we don't think about the importance of a good name. But Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. See, why is a name important? Because we take on our identity of a father through our name. To know my father is to know his name. The name of my father stands for his nature and his characteristics. So often, I, I remember someone would say, what is your name? And I would say, my name is, oh, oh, you're the son of such and such. And I said, yes, yes, that's my father. They said, oh, we know your father. He's a good man. You know, and I said, yes, I understood. My father was a very hardworking man. He taught us boys. He had four boys. He taught us to work hard. He taught us not to be lazy. I remember my father, there were a couple times that he was sick and he still went to work. He would not let sickness keep him at home because he was diligent to his workplace. He was diligent to show up every day. He was diligent to be on time. And all those things that I watched my father do, I inherited them into my life and it became a part of my life throughout the days and weeks and months and years to come. I remember that uh, my father began to come in the, my church when we first started the church. Him and my mother, they participated. He worked and helped in setting up the chairs and my mother participated in teaching the children. They were vitally important to my uh, beginning of the ministry. And I thank God for them. But a few years as we went along, my father joined uh, our church, my church, <laughs> his son's church. I couldn't believe it. He said, I want to join your church. I said, oh, okay. You know, I was kind of stunned. I didn't even think about asking him, nor did I know that he would want to join. But he wanted to do that. And my mother told me one time, you know, your father never joined the church that you grew up in. He never joined that. And he didn't join the other church that we went to. But he joined your church. One of the things when he passed away that I was able to get from my mother was his membership card. And I treasure it today that he wanted to be a part of his son's church. And greater that he wanted to be a part of the Lord Jesus Christ church. What a model that my father was that day to me and how that spoke volumes. Think about it. See, we are represented by our name. It represents our personality and who we are. When God provided for Abraham a ram, God's name was known now to Abraham is Jehovah Jireh, meaning I am your provider. See, what does our name look like? So often we define ourselves by our jobs and our occupation and the things that we do. But our name is important that our children will grow up and understand that who they are in Christ, as my father would be faithfully to the house of God then I would become faithful to the house of God. See, Jesus said to his disciples when he had gathered them, greater works than these shall you do. Because they were probably all struck of the miracles and the things that Jesus did. But Jesus said to them, greater works can you do? Let me say to all the fathers today, if you'll take the word of God and apply it to your life, you can become a great father to your children. You can become a model father to many. I believe that God has called me as I have gotten a few years older now to be a spiritual father to other pastors that are younger who are entering into the ministry. I've given young pastors opportunities to preach and support them and care for them. One of the young pastors that I uh, supported years ago now is Pastor in uh, not only a really good church, but he, he started some other churches as well. And, oh, I'm so proud and blessed to be a part of his life, even though it may have been a very small, minimal part. I'm so proud to be a part of that life. One day uh, I sent him a text and told him that I was proud of what he was doing. 
You know, I ask the question so often, where are all the spiritual fathers today? Where are they? There were those that were spiritual fathers so as I grew up in the church that had a great influence on my life. Where are they today? I pray that God will speak to more fathers to stand up and be the father that God has called them to be. It's important. See, our children need to understand how to navigate their life. We're to teach our children. We're to teach them how to take care of financial issues. See, their life is to be prepared by us fathers as they are grown up. Preparation should be every single day that they are living in your house. We need to teach them how to purchase a home, how to invest, how to use the credit card properly. We need to teach them. That way they know how to navigate their life. That's why they know when they have marital problems, what they should do. It's so easy to say, I quit and walk out on things. No, that's not the answer. The answer is stay in there and fight hard and ask God to help you to love your spouse more, to love your children more and be there for them, to help them and to encourage them. It's, imp it's important we teach them how to handle pressures of life and stresses. We need to teach them how to handle bills. Sometimes when we don't have all the monies to pay them what we should do. As, as I have sought the Lord time and time of God and he give me advice and direction, I pray that my son saw how God helped me and blessed me that day to help me to get through to the next day. See, what characteristics, Father, that you have today that are setting you apart? Is your heart towards God? Do you honor God? and your testimony in life, and does your children see it? See, I'll never forget reading in Luke the story of the prodigal son. We know of the son. There were two sons, an older one and a younger one. The younger one said to his father, I know that one day you're going to give me my inheritance, but i like to get it now. I want you to give it all to me now. And his father gave it to them. The son left, this younger son, and took off and and went out and found friends easily because he had plenty of money and he spent it on his friends and he would eat, drink, and be merry. He, he took all the pleasures of the world into himself, not thinking about tomorrow. But one day to tomorrow came and he had nothing, nothing left. The story goes on that he sought out work and could not find any. He ends up on a farm and feeding the, we call the pigs and the hogs. As he is doing it, he comes to a census. And he says, my father's house is so much better. He treats his servants so much better. They eat so much more than I am eating now. I will return back to my father. I will go and see my father again. He didn't know what to expect, but he made the journey. He did not know that his father each day would look out and watch for his son's return. But finally, when his son came close, his father noticed him coming down the road and literally ran out to meet him, put his arms around him and kissed him and said, come on, son, you're welcome back home. And said, go get a robe, put a new robe around him. Go get him a ring, put it on his finger. We're going to have a festival. We're going to have a celebration. My son, who was lost, is now found. Who was dead, he's now alive. This is the, the thing that I want to call to your attention so often we miss this. His son knew a lot about his father. He knew his father was a compassionate man. He knew that his father treated his uh, uh, workers well paid them well, fed them well. And he knew that because that's why he says, I'm going to go and ask my father not to be his son no more, but be one of his hired help. Because he knew about his father's heart. Fathers, I, I ask you today, are you teaching your children the things of God? Are you, do you have a heart for God? Do you have the right heart that they are seeing? 
as we close this message in prayer, I'm going to pray that your heart is right before God today. Lord Jesus, I pray for all the fathers. Bless them today. Bless their hearts, I pray. If they have not, Lord, taken care of their home properly, help them this day. If they have abandoned their children, help them to return back and make it right. Lord, help them to realize, Lord, that you have never forsaken them, that you always will be there with all the fathers. Would you touch them today? And would you be a great encouragement? And I thank you again for all the fathers. May they have a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a great day.